Hi folks, welcome to the channel. My name's Colin, call sign MM0 OPX. And in this video, I just want to give a bit of an overview of my new aluminium mast that I've purchased. Now, if you've been following the channel, you know that I've been building a 20 meter uh, wire moxon. Um, and it's it's almost there, it's, you know, I'm, I'm actually using it. I've got a lot, couple of mods to make. Um, but one of the things that I wasn't quite 100% happy with was how I was actually going to elevate it up in the air. Now initially I was using my 12 meter uh, spider beam, fine um, fine mast, even with a few sections removed I could get the uh, the beam up 5, 6, even 7 meters, um, but you know I just wanted something just a little bit more uh, sturdier. Um, now I, I did a lot of research, uh, I can't tell you how much research I did, you know, countless hours, you know I, I looked at what people had used already, you know some people were using a uh, GRP fiberglass mast, some people were using uh, aluminium, Loads of different suppliers out there, um, but I eventually settled on an E antenna's uh, 11 meter mast. Now it's actually they call it an E antenna's mast. You know, I purchased this from uh, Martin Lynch and Sons here in the UK, but uh, it's actually an antenna made by Wymo uh, because Wymo uh, actually took over E antennas, and actually the part number on on Martin Lynch's site is actually a, a, a Wymo part number. You could look it up there, and if actually if you go into the Wymo site. Uh, itself, you could actually look at uh, all the, uh, the the variations. Now, obviously, there's a number of factors that that's going to um, lead you to to make your choice of of the mass that you're that you're going to uh, need. Now, um, you get two um, collapsed lengths of this, uh, uh, you know, these aluminium poles. So you get a, a closed length of 1.5 or 1.9. Now, 1.9 that's taller than me, and that's pretty tall. So I what I, I opted for the smaller one. You know, there's there's advantages and disadvantages to both, but I wanted it uh, to be easier to, to travel about. Obviously, because mine is slightly smaller, I'm going to have more sections. Um, so the base section is um, 65 millimetres and the top section is 20 uh, millimetres, and there's 10 sections in total. Um, the sections are clamped together with, um, I would call it a, a heavy-duty Jubilee clip. Um, these clamps are pretty good um, I don't think they're the best and I think I'm actually going to uh, swap them out um, I can't remember off the top of my head uh, I've got something in my mind I think they're called super clamps um, but I'm going to replace the, the clamps probably with those um, these clamps have a 13 mil or a half inch um, uh, nut on them so I just use a, a quarter inch ratchet to those to, to tighten them up and loosen them off um, but they'll do for now but I am going to I am going to buy spares and I had somebody actually commented on Twitter that um, you will you you will need to get new ones. So as I said before, um, you know I bought this primarily or initially to use for my 20 meter moxon. So I bought it knowing that I wasn't going to use it at full height. So knowing that I was actually going to take a couple of sections out if need be, um, because you know all, with all my um, all my setups, I want to do it single handedly. You know by me myself alone. So it needs to be manageable. And uh, I think putting it up 11 metres and getting it guided multiple spots, that was just a little bit too much of an ask. Um, so what I actually did was for my first test is I actually removed the top section and I clamped on the, obviously, the second top section, which had a diameter of, of, of an inch, 1 inch, 25mm. Um, and that worked okay. Now, when I first set this up, it was incredibly windy. Um, a little bit here, I'm scared of but it actually taught me quite a lot uh, about the mast and actually what I needed to do to actually make uh, to make some improvements. Now, the biggest disappointment with this mast is if you actually look at the bottom of it, it comes with bare aluminium at the bottom. You know, if you buy a spider beam or any sort of fiberglass mast, it's got a cap on the bottom of it of some side of some sorts, and I didn't like that on this. So what I actually did was I actually purchased one of these rubber caps. These are just. Um, I think you get these for you know water hose type things, aquariums, and it's a, this is a sixty three millimeter, but it stretches and it actually fits on the um, uh, the bottom uh, diameter just nicely, and that's going to give it some some protection that uh, that I was actually looking for. Now, obviously, I want to use this for my moxing, so I need to be able to rotate it. So I've actually made up a couple of uh, rotatable guys. These are just quarter inch nylon from nylon that I had running about. I've actually got a couple of different sizes here. I'm actually probably going to make a bigger one for some of the um, bigger diameters. Um, now you may be wondering, well, how am I going to actually, you know, turn it? Well, the bottom section, that's going to be guide uh, on the bottom section and it's going to be rotatable from the second section up. And basically how I do that is I've got a Jubilee clip, hose clamp with some PVC uh, 
clear PVC pipe and I basically just um, that that's what the the second section it rests on top of the first section um, and that's going to let me to rotate the whole system and basically if I want to lock it off um, I can actually just tighten up the the, the top of the, the clamp on the bottom section and that's going to allow me to rotate it and that did work with me on on the first test that I did but I says it was incredibly windy um, I actually had to drop the height of it somewhat um, just because I had it guide right at the bottom and I had it guide close to the top so I might actually put three sets of guides on this and then it's going to go absolutely nowhere um, I don't think I mentioned that the pole it's got a, it's got a wall thickness of two millimeters and I think that's pretty good now it's not the type of pole that you're going to take and do a sort of with absolutely no way um, the pole itself weighs about 10 kilos just under 10 kilos so it's really something you probably want to use for field day or you're certainly not want to travel with uh, too much now I've actually thought about that and I've got some uh, some land close by here and um, some community land and I think I'm actually going to you know take it out there I've got a big backpack here and for the distance that I'm going to walk perhaps a mile or so I'm going to I'm going to hike out with it so but as I say, it's not really designed for uh, for portable work. Um, but you know, there, there's lots of options for these masks on the market. Spider Beam does one. Now, the Spider Beam option is very similar, but it's a lot more expensive. So you know that the, the cost did did uh, did come into it. Somebody also commented that um, you know you could make one much cheaper, and you you could uh, uh, you know you could do it much cheaper, make it on your own. Well, I actually priced that up with uh, a local UK supplier. So I priced up all the material that was in this one and the aluminium alone was over 150, it was just about 150 pounds. Now on top of that I would need to buy the clamps um, and I'd also need to cut the slots in the top of each pole. So by the time you add that up, um, really I wasn't really saving anything so I think it's actually quite good value, um, that this aluminium mast. Um, Going forward, um, I'd actually like to make a clamp that goes onto my uh, van, so it clamps onto the tow ball, so I can just basically, uh, you know, park up, clamp it to the to the tow bar or the tow ball, and just, uh, you know, lift it up single-handedly, and then no doubt I'll puff the guy off uh, further up, certainly in the, in the windy conditions. Now, I mean, this mast, it would be absolutely ideal for uh, VHF, UHF beams, and you would get this up to the 11 meters, absolutely no problem at all, providing you've got it to uh, guide correctly. Um, you know, so that that's something that I want to look into. You know, you get something up for VHF and you get a bit of a lift, you're going to work some, going to work some nice stations. So just a quick overview, folks. Um, you're going to see this mast in action. You know, I'm going to do lots more videos with this. Um, getting closer to uh, making the final moxin um, a video, certainly for the 20 meter version, I want to do a, a very in-depth view of the moxin with measurements, put it up with this mast. Um, so if you're thinking about doing that, you know, perhaps give you some ideas. Um, so do I recommend this mast? Definitely. Um, but don't expect that it's going to um, maybe not work right out of the box for you. You know, you have to consider how you're going to guy it, um, all, the, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and it obviously all adds uh, to the cost. Um, you know, I like to use... Um, I like to use a heavy duty um, a galvanized uh, steel pegs, uh, basically made from rebar. Um, you can get these on uh, eBay, that's that's where I buy them. Um, I also like to use um, good guy wire. Now this is Mastrant M. This is uh, three millimeter uh, Mastrant M. This is actually getting really expensive. Um, I got an email through saying one of the UK suppliers was back in stock with us. And it was about double the price from when I last bought it and that wasn't that long ago so prices in the world certainly going crazy so keep that in mind when you want to do that um, as I say a little bit disappointed that it didn't come with this on the bottom of it this cost me all of four pounds okay so I was buying some other bits and pieces um, um, but you know so not expensive so it would be really good if they added that on uh, out the box and I would have been a lot happier but apart from that would I buy it again yes okay folks Hope that's been of interest. Um, 73, see you in the next video.